Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining. It looks like uh, the jump-ons are slowing down a little bit, so we'll go ahead and get started. You are here for the MedTech Solutions uh, PXP Patient Portal Tips and Tricks for a Better Portal Experience. Today, our presenter is Robert Woolley, but let me go over a few housekeeping things before we get started. Everybody is in listen-only mode. If you have any questions, there's a questions box at the bottom of your menu. Feel free to submit those during the presentation. We'll try to get to them at, at the right section. We might have to wait and hold them till the end, depending upon time and how things go, but send those over as you have them, and we will address them. Um, you will receive a recording of this webinar. It usually comes out about a day after the webinar. You'll get an email just like you got the invite with a link, and you can go in there and get into the uh, recording as well as the slides. So you will be getting those after you have attended. So again, welcome. We're glad to have you, and I will pass over the presentation to Robert. Thank you, everyone, for attending. I have a lot of helpful information that I'd like to share. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Robert, and I am NextGen certified on PXP. I've been working exclusively on PXP Portal for a year, and I would say that I spend half my time on new installations and the other half troubleshooting issues or doing support for older installs. In the past year, I've noticed some problems, frequently asked questions that reoccur, and thought I'd collect some of them of the most common topics and present them to you today with suggestions and hopefully solutions. Learning objectives. Hopefully after this presentation, you all have a better understanding of PXP Portal and its applications, be able to troubleshoot and quickly resolve the most common issues with PXP Portal and to give you the skills necessary to apply PXP Portal in your practice. The basics. There are four applications that work together to make PXP Portal run. Site Generator. This application is described by NextGen as the look and feel of the patient portal. This is what the patient sees. When building your portal for the first time, this is where you start. In fact, the very first thing I do on new builds is to log in the site generator and verify that the data sync utility or DSU completed. And then I can see the provider, staff, location, and pharmacies. A few other examples of why you would use site generator would be to put a broadcast message on the patient portal screen. You can make edits to how locations or providers display to your patients on the portal. You can check how your patients are utilizing the portal. Lastly, this is where you can set up staff members to access practice portal. PPIT or PXP portal integration tool. I tend to refer to this mostly as PPIT, but uh, I hear integration tool frequently. I like to call this the rules engine that drives portal messages. For me, this is the critical piece that makes all the patient portal messages go to the correct place. Upon initial setup, I spent a lot of time in PPIT. However, once it is set up, you don't have to make too many changes. The exception would be when you have a new provider and need to add a new route or routing rule. The main reason to be in PPIT after the setup will be to go to the review queue. Remember, the review queue is where you reconcile demographic, insurance, and clinical updates from the patient portal. And of course, the patient portal itself or next-gen PXP portal. This is a secure internet portal that enables patients to communicate with providers, request appointments, request prescription refills, request and review chart data, and access health reference information. Restarting services. If you only take one, if you only take away one piece of information from this presentation, then let this be it. Uh, I think this is very critical. A lot of issues that I have encountered have been resolved just by restarting your PXP services. Now, it won't fix 100% of your issues, but it is the first thing I do when I am assigned a support ticket. At a very high level, what it is doing is making a call to the servers and databases and reestablishing communication between PXP and NextGen. There are two services that we need to look for. 
First one is your PXP connector service that I have up right now. This is always located on your PXP server and you can see a screenshot here of what it looks like. The next would be NextGen API Edge. This is usually on the same server as your other APIs, typically the ancillary server. I have also a screenshot for everyone to see. To restart both, all you have to do is right click or click on the top left corner where it says restart. The most effective way to reestablish communications is to stop and start in a very specific order that I've laid out here. Step one, stop NextGen API Edge. That's the first thing we want to do. If you look at the screenshot with the PXP services at the bottom, we want to stop them from top to bottom. PXP Health Service here is not so important. Step two would be to stop the PXP connector, the PXP MedFusion API, the MF API, and then PXP NextGen API or NG API. Once those have stopped running, we want to go back to nextgen.api.edge and start it. Once it is running, we will go back to PXP services. This time, we'll want to start them from bottom to top, starting with PXP NextGen API, then PXP MedFusion API, and finally, PXP Connector. Updating the connector. Approximately once a month, there is an update to the PXP connector. These updates are always technical or under the hood updates, and usually nothing the patient would see on the portal. These updates always include fixes for KIs, as well as performance improvements and stability. With that being said, I highly recommend that you take the updates you don't have to be first in line when they're released, but you don't want to be several versions behind either. How to update, you ask? This will depend on your level of access, of course, but it is typically on the PXP server. If you cannot access your server directly, then you can always open a ticket with us. You have the option to set up a monthly reoccurring ticket that we can go out and check to see if an update is available. If yes, we will ask you if you want to take the update or not. This is very similar to how we do your medication updates and your formulary updates. If you do not have, if you do have access to the PXP server, then you may notice that when you open the PXP update panel, the top icon there, it is selected to update automatically. I have never had it update automatically. I've, have, I've always had to be hands-on with the updates. So all that being said, the update process is straightforward and you just take the defaults. A parting piece of advice, if you update on your own, make sure your antivirus software is disabled. I have seen several updates go bad due to the antivirus software not playing nice with the update. My second piece of advice will be to clear the cache on your browsers after your update, but I will talk more about that later. Fail messages not going to the inbox. This is another common ticket that I come across. The first thing I do when I see this type of ticket is to restart the services, as I mentioned previously. This is the best place to start. It never hurts to make a call out to the API. Just to be clear, there are a lot of variables that can cause messages to fail, and for brevity, I will focus on just a few. I'll also focus on ask a question and not mention prescription or appointment messages but they're similar. Mappings. If it is just one person that is not able to see the messages or send messages, then the most likely reason would be they are not mapped in Site Generator. I see this frequently when they are new employees. Within Site Generator, find the user that is having the issue. They are either under physicians or non-physicians. Once you bring them up, you'll want to click Edit Personnel. Then on the top navigation bar, click Mappings. You should see a box and you want to see a value in that box. That value is your NextGen user ID. If it is empty or blank, then we need to enter the user ID and click Map. If there is a value already there, then we want to verify that it is correct before we move on. 
changes in routing rule in PPIP. If you recall from earlier, PPIP or the integration tool is the rules engine that tells Portal where to send the messages. So we'll want to log into PPIP. Once logged in, we'll click on the envelope, which is the message routing icon. In my example, I am looking at the communication tab. This is where all my ask a question or ask a staff rules are located. In this scenario, let's say there is a new nurse who recently started and is not receiving any portal messages. The first thing I'm going to do is open up my ask a question and look at my routing rules. Is my nurse, the one who's not receiving messages, listed below? Again, based on how you set this up, there are a couple of options. If you set the, the messages to go to an individual user, like the example in the slide next gen admin, is your nurse in that routing rule? You can also set this to go to a user group that is pulled from file maintenance task work groups. Is your missing nurse in the task work group? If not, you can add them in file maintenance, restart your services to reestablish communication between NextGen and Portal, and hopefully our new, hopefully our new nurse will start receiving messages. Security and system administrator. If our nurse is still not getting messages, then the next place I would investigate would be the security permissions and system administrator. In my slide, I have the permissions that are required for patient portal. I would verify that the access rights under modules and operations are correct, as shown here in my slide, and not deselected. Favorite tool for troubleshooting failed messages. A common support ticket I get is that no messages are coming over at all. No one is getting messages. So in addition to the troubleshooting steps mentioned previously, I want to check if the messages are at least making it to next gen or are they just lost in the ether? One of the things that I can do is from a test portal patient, I can send a message like ask a nurse, prescription refill request or appointment request. My next step is to go to practice portal and see if my recent messages show up in the patient dashboard. My middle screenshot shows recent encounters. These recent encounters show the last messages that the patient sent. If the messages are there and they still haven't appeared in the inbox, then my next step is to check message inbound fetch key. This is more advanced, but this is in PPIT and the uh, Third screenshot shows a little path how you get there, but you can only see it when logged in as a system administrator. If you have that access, then you can check the timestamp on message inbound fetch key, and that will tell you the last time it was able to pull messages over. If it has an older timestamp, like the one that I have there, then it's more than likely there is an issue with the database, and then this will need to be escalated and more than likely open the case. Proxy errors. If you have been supporting PXP Portal for even the shortest time, then you have come across the dreaded proxy errors. Unfortunately, I don't have a magic wand to wave and make them disappear for good. Helpful solutions for proxy errors. NextGen recommends Chrome or Edge as the preferred browsers. I've noticed recently that they might be leaning ever so slightly towards Edge. The recommendation is to clear your cache, and I did put up some screenshots on how to do that within Chrome and Edge. The second recommendation is to use incognito or in private, depending on the browser. Permissions. Without a doubt, setting up staff to access practice portal must be the most confusing piece, but I'll try my best to simplify the process, and this is all done in Sites Generator. Setting up staff and practice portal for troubleshooting. A very common question I get is I can't log into practice portal. The most common reason is people are trying to use their next-gen application credentials, and you must use the credentials in Site Generator. Remember, when we were looking up staff earlier to see if their mappings were correct, 
It is from the same spot where you find your practice portal credentials. On my slide, I have Jessica Bush up, and to get this display, I clicked on login info. If you see the user ID on the slide, your login looks like that. Kind of busy, but that's what it is. Once we know where to find your user ID, we need to give Jessica access to the areas in practice portal she'll need to support. By default, you have very limited access as shown in the middle screenshot. And depending on if you have the form solution enabled, all you might see would be family management. If we want Jessica to have access to appointment requests, ask a question, patient activations and prescription renewals as shown below, then we need to set up her permissions so Jessica can access those areas in practice portal. I highly recommend when setting up users and their permissions for the first time to do it one solution at a time until you get the hang of it. In my top screenshot, you may notice four drop down boxes. By default, it wants to show you all solutions, all locations, all users under the personnel type of other, which is at the very top. This would be fine if our personnel type was physician. However, when working with the personnel type of other, which is everybody else but the physicians, it's not giving you the correct options. In my ask a nurse example, if I select enable here, as that is my only option, what I am actually doing is enabling that person to be visible on the portal. So if I were to see any of the people listed there as an option to select as a provider on the patient portal, that's because we enabled it here. To avoid that pitfall, I recommend you drill down on your drop boxes, like in my bottom screenshot. When you do that, it makes the view process option available. Once you tick view process, it will add the ask a nurse tab or box we saw earlier. And most importantly, Robert in this screenshot will not be an option the patient can select as a provider. You don't have to select one user at a time if you're doing multiples, but you definitely want to filter to one solution at a time. Of course, to be even more confusing, this only applies to your ask a question or ask a staff. To have access to patient activations, your only option is to enable. Selecting enable adds the highlighted box to the selected person's practice portal account. For prescription renewals, we do not want to select accept as that makes the user visible on the provider dropdown. We want to select view. We don't have to select process. Utilization report. The utilization report is a helpful tool to show who is doing what in the portal. You can access it through Site Generator. On my slide, you can see a graph of the total portal counts created since day one. It also shows how many registered in the current month and the previous month at a glance. You can filter it by 12 quarters. 12 months, 12 weeks, as well as days. On slide 33, I've shown you the total number of messages, oh, sorry, excuse me, I've shown you the total number of secure messages sent by the practice. This includes CCD sent and replies to patient messages or requests from your providers. As a staff questions, show the total number of questions asked by a patient. If you use forms, you can see how many were completed by the patient. Prescription renewal show the total number ERX requests and the same for appointments and patient education. Slide 34 here, this will show you all the secure messages sent by patients to your practice. This includes ask a question, ask a staff, 
appointment requests, prescription renewals, as well as secure messages replies. View, download, or transmit shows how many patients viewed their patient summary documents in a CCD. And you can see by far the most activity is in there, as patients like to see their CCDs. Password resets. I have saved the best for last. The patient dashboard in practice portal will be the most frequent place you will go for PXP portal support. On my slide at the bottom under patient utilities, you can see there is a link for password resets. Of course, your patient can reset their password on the main patient portal screen, but there are times when it's just easier to do it for them. If you notice, you can also email the username to them. Just to point out some additional helpful tips, from within the patient dashboard, at the top, you can find the username they enrolled with, as well as the email address they used. Under the family management section, this is where you can link a child to a parent guardian or link the patient to a trusted representative. Depending on the age of the patient is what link you will see. As I said earlier, I have saved the best for last. And so that's all I have. And I will turn it back over to Holly. All right, does anybody have any questions or do you want Robert to go back to any of the slides and review something again? Uh, feel free to submit that in the question box. I do have a couple questions. All right, um, what order do I need to restart services? Can you go back over that? Sure. So restarting your services, the first thing you want to do is go to the server where the NextGen API Edge is located. And then once you find it, you can just uh, highlight it and do a right click to stop it. Or if it's highlighted in that little left corner there, you can just stop it. The second step will be to go to where your PXP server is located, bring up your services, and then find these four PXP services located here. The three main ones are the PXP Connector Service, the PXP Metfusion API Service, and the PXP Next Gen API Services. So to stop it, we want to stop PXP Connector Service first, then the PXP Metfusion API Service, then the PXP Next Gen API Service. Once those are stopped, then go back to the server where the Next Gen API Edge is located. You can restart that, and once it's running, then we'll restart the PXP services, but we want to do it from bottom to top. So starting with PXP Next Gen API service, PXP Metfusion API, and then lastly, PXP Connector service. And then that does seem to handle a lot of the issues if you restart them in that order, especially the Next Gen Edge API. All right, uh, let's see, does that answer your question? Um, let me know if not. Um, and then I have, can the patient request a password reset themselves or can it only be done in the practice portal? Yes, yeah, so uh, the patient can, when they log in, there's a link down at the very bottom that most people tend to overlook and it allows them to reset the password themselves. Uh, a lot of questions I get like in the support is, uh, they didn't get maybe the enrollment. Uh, so it's helpful to go in the practice portal so you can verify that it's going over to the correct um, email address, but you can also reset it from there. I like to tease my mom a lot. She's not the most uh, technical savvy person out there. So if uh, she's calling on the line, it would just be a lot easier for everyone involved to <laughs> just reset it for her, send her that email and then, um, avoid that stress of walking her through that. All right, I'm not sure if this is a question I have. It says, I need my password reset for PXP. I have the username. So what's next, I take it. If they have the username, they can go in and just do it. So they, they so do they know the patient? I'm not real sure. So the only, only information is just the username. 
Let me go to like the dashboard. Yeah. Let me let me work my way down there. So I can email the username uh, with them from the patient utility. And so, but I have to know who the patient is. Uh, if the question is, uh, all I have is a username, can I bring it up? I don't think so, um, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But I think you have to know who the patient is, which would make sense. All right. Let you know if we get some feedback on that. And then another question, um, I think you mentioned that they can use Edge over Chrome. Um, so that is correct. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions that we have? Give it a minute and see if I get any response. I'm surprised that everybody's quiet. <laughs> Patient portal is a, a difficult one to maneuver. So, all right, if you do have any further questions, um, feel free after the presentation, if something comes to you today, tomorrow, whenever, feel free to reach out to your um, rep direct if you know who that is. If you don't, um, you can send an email to info at uh, medtechsolutions.com. Um, I do have something that just came in. Are there any plans to put the three management applications together? Are you there, Robert? Oh, I'm sorry. What was the question? Are there any plans to put the three management applications together? Um, the management applications, you mean the they had something as of right now there is no plans to make everything all in one there was like a year ago there was plans to have something released like right about this time but they've kind of shelved it uh, and the main focus is for stability improvements on the portal so that's not something that's going to be coming out anytime soon yeah she put ppit practice portal on site jen yeah, so yeah, I, I can't remember what it was going to be called. It's going to be like Defender or something like that. It was going to be a name like that, but yeah, they're, they've shelved that for now. Okay. All righty. Well, thank you again, Robert, for the information today. I hope this was helpful for everyone. Thank you for your attendance. Um, again, you will receive a slide or an email with a link to the slides and to the recording. Um, feel free to reach out to us if you need further assistance. We are here to help with any and all things patient portal. Um, let's see, got one other question. Uh, can you explain the MSG inbound portion again? Sure. So I yeah, may have. Missed that. There it is. I forgot where it was in the slide. So when I'm troubleshooting failed messages, no messages are coming over at all. So in that top screen, so I'll log into Practice Portal. And the first thing I want to do is look at these recent encounters. Now, for whatever reason, they're not in uh, date order, but I will look to see the, the most recent one in there. And if that's the message uh, that either I sent as a test or the patient is sending, if it reaches there, but it's not going to next gen and no messages have been coming over for a while, in the uh, system administrator, system admin portion under practice config, and then the little yellow highlighted area there that's called runtime configuration. That is a troubleshooting tool that I use. And that tells me the last time that the system was able to look and see and grab messages and pull them over. So if, if the last date is 729 at 745, I know that as a, it hasn't done anything since August 9th. So none of those messages are going over. And usually there is 
some message uh, in SQL that is stuck and that's preventing that from going over. And so that requires an escalation to a developer to troubleshoot that, find the, the stuck message and then clear it. And usually once that's cleared, then all those messages start coming over again. Got it. Thank you. So that's a tool I use to, to look to see if the messages are actually getting over there. It's a different story if it has today's date and in, uh, in current time. All right. Anyone else have anything? Going once, going twice. <laughs> All right. Again, thank you again for your attendance today. Um, let us know if you do have questions. That email, if you don't know who your rep is, info at medtechsolutions.com. And uh, look for that email with the link. And again, thank you for your time. And everybody have a great afternoon. Thanks, Robert. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining.